So there's a beautiful song, a glorification of Lord Nityananda. It's called... Dala Yilair Gita Gira. Let me see what we can do here. I'll need some cartels, and we need a Murdunga player. Mm -hmm. So this is a very wonderful song called Dayala Gita, Dayal Tir Gita, and it's in glorification of Lord Nityananda. <clears throat> After that, I don't know how, how much I can sing of this, but if it sounds like something is happening, then just stay with it. <laughs> don't give up. <laughs> <clears throat> so there's the verses on the board. Bodo sukir kabogai, Bodo sukir kabogai. Bodo sukir kabor gai, Bodo sukir kabor gai. Sura bi kunje te, na mer hakule che. Sura bi kunje te, na mer hakule che. Koda ni tai, koda ni tai. Bora moja kato tai, boja mora kato tai. Bora moja kato tai, bora moja kato Strata mule sura nam sete hate vika. Strata mule sura nam sete hate vika. Korani Thai, Korani Thai. Jata Bhakta Vinda Basi, Jata Bhakta Vinda Basi. Jata Bhakta Vinda Basi, Jata Bhakta Vinda Basi. Hari Kora Dekina Biche Daro Kasi Hari Kari Dekina Biche Daro Kasi Kora Nitai Kora Nitai Jadanam Kimbe Bhai, Jadinam Kimbe Bhai. Jadinam Kimbe Bhai, Jadinam Kimbe Bhai. Arsam Sangde Chalo Mahanaja Kate Jai. Ah, 
मामा संगे चलो मजार हत जाए खो रानी थाए खो रानी थाए तुम्हें बिंदे कृष्णन हम तुम्हें बिंदे कृष्णन हम तुम्हें बिंदे कृष्णन हम तुम्हें किंबे कृष्णन हम ধাস্তরী <laughs> গৃহে থাকো বানে থাকো না থাকে গৃহে থাকো বানে থাকো নাক থেক ঝঞ্ঝ 
Chandali de nam nitai doyam hoi. Ah, Chandali de nam nitai doyam hoi. Ah, Korani tai, Korani tai. Ah, Korani tai. Korhan <laughs> Nithai chara na vina ara na sroi Khora nithai, khora nithai Khora nithai, khora nithai Bhoro sukhe kabu ghai, bhoro sukhe kabu ghai I'm for a suke rabo guy, or a suke kabor guy. Asura be kunjete, name hakulete. Sura be kunjete, name kulate. I call on it high, or on it high. I am singing news of the greatest happiness at the place known as Surabi Kunj in Sri Navadweep, the marketplace of the Holy Name, has now been opened. And Lord Nityananda himself is the proprietor. Such wonderful things are going on in that blissful marketplace. Sri Nityananda Prabhu is selling the pure holy name wholesale, merely for the price of one's faith. Seeing the assemble of devotees eagerly waiting to purchase the name, Lord Nityananda first examines each of them to test their qualifications. Then he sells them the name by bargaining for his price accordingly. Oh, my friends, if you really want to buy this pure holy name, then just come along with me, for I am now going to meet with this Nityananda Mahajan. Thus, you will finally be able to acquire the pure holy name. I will also take my commission, and in this way, all three of us will fulfill our desires. Sri Nityananda Prabhu is so extraordinarily merciful, accepting only one's faith in the holy name. He bestows the topmost divine bliss. When Nittai sees a tear welling in someone's eyes upon chanting the name of Goda, he instantly gives his support to that person. Indeed, he bestows all divine opulences. He gives that person genuine realization of the pure teachings of Sri Krishna as found in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. While displaying all these inconceivable... Hmm, he pays no attention to one's caste, material wealth, mundane knowledge, or physical ability. Now, dear friends, please reject all of Maya's entanglement and snares. If you are a householder, then just remain at home. If you are renounced, then just live in the forest. Nothing more will trouble you. 
We no longer need to fear the terrible age of quarrel. For more, the most merciful Nityananda gives the holy name to one and everyone, even to the lowest of Hmong men. Bhaktivinoda Thakur calls out and proclaims to all, other than the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, there is no other shelter. Sri Nityananda Rambaki Jai. That's a beautiful song by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. I apologize because that's the first time I sang it. <laughs> so I'm still getting used to it. <laughs> okay, so we'll speak a little bit. Om Agyan Timiranda Syagena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Svampadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Satarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Ganadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So His Holiness uh, Paladananda Maharaj spoke so many pastimes this morning <laughs> And so I don't want to repeat those pastimes so much, and some of you are just hearing for the first time. But I will tell one that he told. But before I do that, I'd like to introduce a little bit about the appearance of Lord Nityananda. He appeared in a place where the Ganges does not flow, in a place called Ekachakra Dam. Probably some of you have been to Ekachakra Dam. It is a very, was a very remote village. But now, in the last 20 years, the devotees from Sri Mayapur have been coming and visiting regularly. And then there was a guest house built. And finally, a grand temple was finished about two years ago in glorification of Lord Nityananda. So now that little small village where Lord Nityananda first appeared has now become a attraction for many, many pilgrims who want to learn more about Lord Nityananda. This, for, this place, Ekrachakragam, was also the place where the Pandavas, when they were in exile, spent one year there in Ekrachakragam, and then there's money wonderful stories of the Pandavas when they lived there in Ekachakradam. Ekachakradam is not known by the people in the area as Ekachakradam. It's called Birchandrapur, after the son of Lord Nityananda, whose name was Birachandra, who was an incarnation of Shiradakshai, Vishnu. So that small village was formerly known as Birchandrapur, and later, of course now it is still known in that way, but we use either Birchandrapur or Ekachakradam to describe that particular village. Lord Nityananda appeared there, and he appeared 12 years before the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya appeared in 1486, Lord Nityananda in 1474. So Lord Nityananda, when he was just a little boy, like him, <laughs> growing up, he would like to play with his friends in the village, but they wouldn't play, you know, just ordinary games. They would play the pastimes of the Lord. And Lord Nityananda would teach all his friends all these different pastimes. And sometimes the, the villagers would be watching these children playing in these pastimes. 
And they would say Lord to the Lord, his name was Nittai, of course, he was born with that name Nittai. They would say, Nittai, how do you know these stories so well? These are, you're, 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 you're doing the pastimes exactly. He said, he would say to them, these are my pastimes. <laughs> but they couldn't figure it out. <laughs> So one famous pastime, which was told this morning, I'll tell it again, it's a sweet pastime. They were playing with the fighting between the monkey soldiers and Ravana and his army of Rakshasas. So Nittai was in the role of Lakshman. And during the fight, we know from the story how Indrajit, the younger brother of Ravana, he was very powerful. And uh, he got the name Indrajit, means one who conquers Indra. He defeated the king of heaven in battle. So he was awarded with so many special weapons because of his fighting prowess. So he had this javelin. It was a very powerful javelin. You know what a javelin is? It's a long rod with a very sharp tip on the end and you throw it and that's how it's used as a weapon so in the fight he took out his invincible javelin and threw it at Lakshman and he aimed perfectly and hit Lakshman in the chest and knocked him down and he was unconscious Ram immediately stopped fighting and came to see what was happening with L Lakshman, and Lakshman was unconscious. And everyone was concerned. And then one doctor, Kaviraj, he came and he said, hmm, well, there's only one thing that could save him. There is an herb called Sanjeevani, and this herb is not here. It is thousands of miles away in the Himalayas. So someone have, would have to go to this mountain, find that herb, and bring that herb back. And Sanjeevani is a real herb. It's not something we just made up. Does the people who know how to use it can bring a dead body back to life. That's a powerful herb. It's, as long as the body is still intact, they can bring the body back to life. So, who's going to do it? Hanuman! He can do it! Jai Hanumanji! So Hanuman is thinking, here's a good chance to serve my Lord. So immediately, before anybody even said anything else, he was gone, flying through the air. Because he had the power to fly. And when he landed in the Himalayas, he, he came to the right mountain, But because he came with such power, all the herbs in the mountain went into the ground. They got scared when they saw Hanuman. So they all hid in the ground, so he couldn't find the right herb. So he was thinking, I'll just bring the whole mountain. So he carried that whole mountain. This is not some story, it's actually true. Because when I was in a place called Satara. Satara means seven hills. It's in Maharashtra. The devotees there, they say that Satara means seven hills. And one of the hills was when Hanuman was flying back. Now, this was a big mountain. The top of the hill fell from the mountain and landed in that place which is now known as Satara and stayed there. And to this day, the Kavirajas, the, the doctors in that area, they go to that mountain if they need herbs for making medicines. So, Hanuman flew back. The, er, the doctor found the herb and gave it to Lakshman, and Lakshman was again revived. Now, they're playing this pastime. So one boy played the part of Indrajit and shot a little flower and that was supposed to be the javelin. And it hit 
little Nittai, and he fell unconscious. And now everyone's thinking, okay, what do we do? And he didn't move. Everybody's thinking, what's going on? And they went near him. There was no life symptoms. Looked like he, was, he had left the world. No one knew what to think. Finally, one boy said, Hanuman, bring the herb. Bring the herb. Bring the herb for Lakshman. So one boy, he came. He was, he was Hanuman in the play. <laughs> and he brought the herb, and they brought it to little Nittai, and he got up. <laughs> so he would play these pastimes so perfectly that all the residents, especially the elders, they would say, wow, he really knows these pastimes really good. And he's playing so nicely. Boy, we're just getting these leelas directly. So he would do that, and that's how he would play. One day, when Nittai was about 12 years old, one sannyasi came traveling, and he came to the house of Hadai Pandit. Hadai Pandit was the father of Lord Nityananda. And his wife was called Padmavati. So he stayed. And Hadai Pandit was a brahmana. And he welcomed him nicely. Gave him all facilities. Took, took care of him so nicely. Fed him. And took care of all his needs. And little Nittai developed some attraction for this person. And this person developed an attraction for Nittai. Then, after three days, the sannyasi says, I will now depart. And so, it is customary to offer the guest a gift. So, Hadai Pandit, being a perfect Brahmin, he said, since you've come to my house and you've blessed my house, we are so fortunate by your association. We want to offer you some gift. So please ask. He made a mistake. Big mistake. The sannyasi said, well, yes, actually there's one thing I do need. I'm a sannyasi and I'm traveling alone. I need a, an assistant. So give me your son, Nitai. Oh, Nitai. Hadai Pandit froze. He didn't know what to do. He couldn't say no to the sannyasi. He gave his word. At the same time, he was thinking, if Nittai leaves, my life leaves with him. What can I do? So he was frozen. Finally, he turned to his wife, Padmavati. What should we do? She said, well, you gave your word. And she wasn't happy either. But the word of a brahmana is more valuable than his life. I have also a Kshatriya too. And so, Nittai, he just got up, walked next to the sannyasi. They turned around and they walked away out of the village. Hadai Pandit was watching in great anguish and ha unhappiness as he was watching his son and the sannyasi walk farther and farther away. It said that he stayed in that one spot for three months and didn't move. And finally, after three months, he left the world. Just like when Lord Ramachandra left Ayodhya, Dasarat also left the world because he couldn't spare the separation from his son. But when the villagers, the neighbors, they heard, Nittai's gone. And he went with the sannyasi. Let's try to find him. Let's bring them back. I'll give them my son. No, I'll give them my son. Everyone wanted to give their son and, and keep Nittai in the village. And they went all looking this way and that way. And they went all around looking in other villages. Couldn't find anything. He was gone. And Nittai traveled for 20 years. Because at the time he left, when he was 12 years old, that was the time Lord Chaitanya appeared. So he knew, it's time for me to come and meet Lord Chaitanya. And just like Balaram, right after the Battle of Kurukshetra, he went on pilgrimage, visiting so many holy places, 
for 20 years. And Lord Nityananda did the same thing. Exactly, because Rajendra Nandanaye, Sachi Sutta Hoilo Se, Balaram Hoilo Nitai, that that same Sachi Sutta, Krishna, has now come again as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Nitai is the same Sri Balaram who has appeared now as the associate of Lord Chaitanya. So there's no difference. It says the scriptures are very strong. They give a very strong injunction. Anyone who makes a distinction between Balaram and Nityananda is a Pashandi. A Pashandi is an atheist. So there's no difference. There's only it's the same person in two different forms. That's all. But there is a mood of difference. Lord Nityananda, Balaram, when the demons were there, he would just kill them, <laughs> finish them off. You don't know why? Why waste time? <laughs> but when Nityananda was there, he would try to kill them by give them the mercy of the holy name, just like we were singing this song. It doesn't matter what your qualifications are. And this is important to listen. It doesn't matter whether you have any kind of scholastic ability, whether you have any kind of economic substance. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are, where you are, how you are, why you are, whatever you are. If you show a little attraction for chanting the holy name, Lord Nityananda worships you as someone who is very, very special. Anyone who chants the holy names of the Lord, Lord Nityananda, feels that that person is my Prabhu, he's my master. Because that's why he came. He came to distribute the holy name, Bodo Sukher Kabugai, Bodo Sukher Kabugai, Sudabi Kundeche, Namira Kuleche, Koda Nitai. Koda Nitai means, Koda means merchant. Nitai, who is a merchant, he's selling. What is he selling? He's selling the holy name. How can he sell the holy name? He's supposed to give it away free. No, he's selling. He's going to make a profit. He's a businessman. He's not going to get away without any profit. But what is the price? Is it euros? No. Rupees? No. Dollars? No. Pounds? No. Slotis? No. What is it? It is faith, faith. If you have faith, and how much faith you have in the holy name, that's how much Lord Nityananda gives you. That is the, that is the currency for getting the holy name, your faith. If you have complete and absolute, fixed, unmoving, unchanging faith in the holy name, you will achieve the perfection of life in this life, because the holy name is so powerful. We were chanting and dancing tonight, and devotees were feeling very happy, but that, that is just a tiny drop of a 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 drop of the mercy of the holy name, of a drop. It is so powerful. We just, we didn't even scratch the surface. We didn't even come close to getting, the holy name is so, why? Because it's Krishna himself. It's Krishna himself. That's Krishna. Kali Kale, Nama Rupa, Krishna, Avatar. Nama Hoite, Hayasarva, Jagat, Nistara. In this age, Krishna has personally come fully in the sound of his name. There's no difference, nami nami known. Abhinna tvam, nami nami known. No difference between Krishna's name and Krishna. That's the holy name. That's what we've been given. That's the mercy in this name. And it's freely given by Lord Nityananda. Because Lord Nityananda wants to glorify Lord Chaitanya. He loves Lord Chaitanya more than he loves him than anything and so, if he can see people chanting the holy name, 
he feels Lord Chaitanya's glories will spread everywhere, and that makes Lord Nityananda very, very happy. So those who chant the holy names of the Lord become very, very special. But we have to chant with faith that there is nothing greater, nothing better, nothing more powerful, nothing more pure, nothing more direct in connection with Sri Krishna himself, the holy name of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. And when, Hare Krishna, when Lord Nityananda sees you that you are enthusiastically chanting the holy name, he says, I'm going to take the dust of that person's feet and put it on my head. <laughs> That's how much he worships. Just, was, just see what he did just to give the holy name to two very low rascals, Jagai and Madai. Their names were Jagadananda and Madhavananda. But because they were, they were Brahmanas, they had committed every sin possible except one. They didn't fend Vaishnavas. <laughs> Their sins were so much. Yamaraj said to his Servant Chandra Gupta, tell me the sins of Jagai and Madai. Oh, we have hired another hundred new scribes to write down their sins, and they're working 24 hours a day, and they're still one month behind in catching up with listing all the sins of Jagai and Madai. They were so sinful can't imagine how sinful they were. But Lord Nityananda, he went and said, chant the holy names. And they became angry. They chased after them. Haridas Thakur was there. Haridas Thakur and Lord Nityananda started to run. Jagai Mother, they were so fat, they couldn't run fast. <laughs> we can't use that word in today's word. They were big, you know. We're not supposed to use that word fat today because it's not very nice. But anyway, it is. It's, they were fat. <laughs> and they were drunk. <clears throat> Couldn't run. And they were crashing into each other. And Lord Nityananda and Lord and, uh, Haridas Thakur, they were running and laughing. But uh, Haridas said to Lord Nityananda while they were running, you know, I got beaten in 22 marketplaces, and somehow I survived. But now that I'm associating with you, I don't know what will happen to me. <laughs> and then they all started to laugh again. And so they went back and reported their Sankirtan scores for that day. <laughs> and they came to Lord Chaitanya. And then Lord, Nid Lord Chaitanya, uh, Lord, I'm sorry, uh, Haridas Thakur said, this Nityananda, he's a madman. <laughs> he's a madman. He goes along, he, he associates with drunkards. Lord Chaitanya said, yes, drunkards like to associate with other drunkards. <laughs> but he's drunk on the holy name. <laughs> and so they were laughing. So the next day, Lord Nityananda said, I have to finish my attempt. So again, they came back and... Again, from a distance, they say, Hey, who's calling us? There he is again! Hey, chant the holy name. Get out of here! Chant the holy name. Well, get him! Get him! So they, they took a pot, threw it, boom, hit Lord Nithyan under the head, and his head started to bleed. Oh, my God. The townspeople were watching, and they ran to Lord Chaitanya. Lord Nithyan is in trouble. He came, and while he was coming... He summoned his Sudarshan Chakra. Sudarshan Chakra Ki. Yeah. Sudarshan Chakra Ki. Yeah. Om Namo. Om Namo Bhagavate Sudarshanaya Diptre Paditanaya Sarve Diksho Banaya Haraya Humphat Brahmane Param Jyoti Se. Sri Sudarshan Chakra Ki. Jai! Yeah. And so Lord Chaitanya 
And there it was. Now that chakra has as much light as the Brahma Jyoti. Powerful. In fact, it's an expansion of the Brahma Jyoti. And that chakra is invincible. It can destroy the whole universe <laughs> alone. But it only acts under the guise of the Lord. It doesn't do anything separate. Just like us, we do things separate. <laughs> but it only works under the Lord. So the Lord, when he saw what was happening, he, the chakra was there and he was about to, to finish him off. And then Madai, not Madai, but Jagai, he ran and jumped at the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya and said, my dear Lord, please, please, please. You know, he did it, not me. <laughs> he was blaming his brother. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't kill me. You can kill him if you want. <laughs> You know, when things get rough, the, you, know, it's, it's, you try to save yourself first. You know? In fact, he was going to hit Nittai again, but I stopped him. Oh, really? When Lord Chaitanya heard that, he became very happy, and he blessed you. But then, Lord Nityananda said, My dear Lord, we have come in this age to kill not the demons, but to kill their mentality. In this age, we are not killing their bodies, but we're killing their mentalities. So please be merciful to them. And Lord Chaitanya, when he heard the plea from Lord Nityananda, praying for these two persons, his chakra stopped. Then, what happened at Lord Chaitanya He showed his mercy, because Lord Chaitanya's body was golden in color, beautiful golden color. But then, right at that moment, when Lord Nityananda gave his mercy to these two persons, of course, before that, Madai ran and asked for mercy for Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya said, you're not getting it from me, you get it from him. <laughs> so. He ran and fell at the feet of Lord Nityananda, crying like a little baby. Please, I'm so, I didn't know who you were. I was so sorry. Please forgive me. Show me your mercy. And Lord Nityananda is so kind. You can't imagine his kindness. He's so kind. And out of his kindness, he forgave both of them. And when that happened, something wonderful really happened. All the sins that Jagai and Madai had ever committed came into the body of Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya became black. <laughs> His golden body changed into a blackest form. And somebody said, hey, you look like Krishna now. And then Lord Chaitanya made a declaration. And this is interesting. He said, These sins of Jagare Mare that have I taken, they will go to anyone who offends Vaishnavas. That's in Chaitanya Bhagavan. Anyone who offends the Vaishnavas will get the reactions of these sins from Jagai and Mare. So Lord Chaitanya was... Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda show that, you know, to serve the Lord is wonderful, but to serve the Vaishnavas is great. <laughs> so, uh, who's a Vaishnava? When, uh, what's his name? Ooh. From Nagara Gram, what was his name? Anyway, one great soul came from from Kulagram? What was it? No. And one village near nearby Navadweep. Nagar? Krishna Nagar. Krishna Nagar. And he said to Lord Chaitanya, Who is a Vaishnava? Can you tell me what who is a Vaishnava? And Lord Chaitanya said something. He said, anyone who once chants the holy names of the Lord, I consider to be a Vaishnava. 
That's how merciful he was. That's how merciful he was. So the Lord forgave both of them. And then Marai and Jagai, they were welcomed into the association. And that night they came. And all the other devotees were there. And they, uh oh, who, these guys are coming. Who, no, no. And Lord Chaitanya learned it and understood. You don't have to worry. They are now Vaishnavas. You should treat them just like any, uh, like you treat each other. They are Vaishnavas. All their sins are gone, and now they are engaged in devotional service. So that's how merciful they were, and. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says something very interesting in connection to this pastime. He says that the saving of Jagai and Madai is not simply an historical fact. It is not just a story from the scriptures. It is a feature of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda's mercy that is going on today. He's still saving the Jagais and Marais in this world. What is our qualification for performing devotional service? Our qualification is the mercy of the Lord coming through the mercy of the spiritual master and the association of devotees. That's our, that's our qualification. If we keep those things, praying for the mercy, and associating with and serving Vaishnavas, then Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda will benedict us with the faith that we need to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Dhamma, Hare Dhamma, Dhamma Dhamma, Hare Hare. When this news of saving Jagai and Mare came around to the great souls. Narada Muni. Narada Muni Bajaivi Naradhika Ramana Namre. He started playing on his veena, and he was playing so fast, because he was so happy. He couldn't, he couldn't explain his happiness. This has never been done before, such mercy, that when he was playing, he dropped his veena, and he couldn't find it. And Yamaraj, Yamaraj started to dance and dance and dance and he fainted. He fell unconscious. Yamaraj, he's sober, so sober. And Lord Shiva, he was dancing so much, all his clothes fell off and he didn't even know it. This is how incredible it was for everyone to hear how much mercy that these two fellows received from Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya. This past pastime is a very, very special pastime. And so, when we think of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, Namo Mahavadanaya, Krishna Prema Padayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya, Namani Gauda Triste Namaha. There's no more merciful than Lord Chaitanya, but there is Lord Nityananda. <laughs> he is even more merciful than Lord Chaitanya because Lord Chaitanya wanted to kill Jaga and Marai, but Lord Nityananda said, no, let's give them love of God instead. So they did. And Marai, he was feeling so bad that he had caused harm to Lord Nityananda, that he would punch himself in the face <laughs> regularly. He was feeling so bad. So one day he came crying and fell at the feet of Lord Nityananda. His heart was so torn, thinking what he had done to Lord Nityananda. And Lord Nityananda was like a mother who forgives a child when the child kicks the mother, you know. It's not a big thing for the mother. So Lord Nityananda said, all right, I will give you a service. And if you do this service, then all of your bad feelings will go. 
you will be happy and all of this anxiety that you're feeling will all disappear. And so he told them, people regularly, they go to the Ganga and they bathe. But it's nice that they can come before they go to the Ganga and bathe in a small ghat and prepare themselves to bathe in the Ganga. So you go to where he showed them a place, and you dig a ghat here, and then you invite people to come and bathe there. So he did. He took his shovel and whatever else he needed and started digging this ghat near the Ganga. And people were coming and they were saying, oh, there he is. There's that mud eye again. What a rascal. So they would take a rock and throw it at him. And it would hit him, and he would pick up the rock, and he would walk back to the person and say, please throw it again. <laughs> That's how much he had changed, simply by the, the mercy of Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya. That's how much, how much he had completely changed. His heart was just so soft, and he had became, as Lord Chaitanya told his devotees, you should see them just as just as good as all of the all of all of you. you they're, they're just they are devotees. Don't see them in any other way. So that is Lord Nityananda and that is Lord Chaitanya. So we are all so blessed to have not only Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda here, but we have Gadadhar, we have Srivas, we have uh, Sri Advaita Acharya. The Panchatattva, how fortunate it is the devotees in Ljubljana. It's incredible when you think about this good fortune that Lord Chaitanya has personally appeared here to accept service and to give unlimited mercy to the devotees here. It's not something accidental. It's not like, well, we just have these deities and somebody has other deities. It's not like that. The Lord chooses where he wants to go. It's not, we, we may think we decide what deities to get, but he tells you, and you make the decision, and then you think you made the decision. He says, I want to go to Ljubljana. And then, then the person says, I think we should get deities of Gornitai here. He says it first, and then, yeah. Because the Lord directs where he wants to go. He just, does, just doesn't go any place. So how fortunate he has chosen this place called Ljubljana, <laughs> Slovenia, to be here. And that is that is special, 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 special mercy. <laughs> because no matter how fallen you are, if you worship Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya, they don't see that. They see... If this person has some desire for service, this person has some desire to chant, that person is wonderful. That's how they see it. They are so kind, so mercy. And Prabhupada would say to us, just try to understand the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. Just, even if you, you have great intelligence, you have great abilities, you're very good at understanding things, try to understand the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. And then Prabhupada answered that you won't be able to. You won't be able to. And when Prabhupada came to one temple in America, 1975, it was the end of February 1975, was practically around this same date. It's interesting. I think it was around, yeah, it was around the, the time of, of Lord, Lord Nityananda's appearance day. He came. And in this temple, it was in the place called Atlanta, Georgia. And the main deities were big brass deities of Gornetai. Prabhupada came, and devotees came from all over America to see Prabhupada. The temple was packed. The temple was about this size, but a little wider. Same length, but a little bit wider. Maybe even a little longer, too. There were so many temp devotees in the temple that there were devotees standing outside the window to see Prabhupada. 
That's how crowded it was. People came from everywhere. And Prabhupada sat down and got a pair of cartels, and he was about to sing. Parama Karuna Bahudui Jane Nitai Gauda Chandra Sabayabhatara Sadosidomani Kevalayananda Kanda. But he didn't get that far. He got a few words. His voice fell, faltered, and Prabhupada stopped. And when he stopped, the whole temple was completely silent. You couldn't hear, you could hear a feather hitting the floor. That's how quiet it was. Complete silence. And Prabhupada's eyes were closed and you could see tears falling down his eyes. And then after some time, it seemed like a hundred years, but it was only a few minutes, Prabhupada opened his eyes and said, they are so kind. They are so merciful. They are so kind. And Prabhupada couldn't do anything else. And then he said, just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> his, his emotions were, he was just remembering how kind and how loving Gornitai were. And because of that, he was choked up in ecstasy and he wasn't able to speak. And this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story. Happened around the end of February, 1975. So, yeah, this is Gornitai. They're very kind, very merciful. But we shouldn't take advantage of their mercy by wasting time. We should use whatever time we have. This life is short. Life is very short. In Kali Yuga, people don't live long. And as time goes on, the age will cause people to live even shorter lives. In previous ages, like in Satya Yuga, people lived up to 100,000 years. Valmiki Muni meditated for 60,000 years. And from the age after that, the Treta Yuga people were living 10,000 years sometimes. And the previous age to this, the Dupara Yuga people, you read it, if you read the Bible, you hear about people in the Bible, they were living 500, 700 years. You know, uh, Noah, the one Noah who created Noah's Ark, he lived something like 800 years. So people don't live so long in this age. We, if you live 100 years, that's a long time. People I think the average age in the world now is something like in the 60s. Not even. In India, the, 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 uh, the average age is something even less than that. In developed countries, people don't live 75, 80 years, maybe. <laughs> and people think, oh, that's 80 years old. That's old. But Advaita Charya was, he was a hundred and he was 152 years old when he left the planet. And Bhishma Dev was 256 years old. That was just the previous age. And there are, there are even yogis today who live in the Himalayas who don't come out. They live 200, 250 years, some of them. But in this age we live in, we live such a bad life. The water is poison, the air is poison, the food is poison, the atmosphere is poison, and there's so much noise, confusion. It's really good. Well, not good, but anyway, it's kind of a relief for Mother Earth that all this COVID came in because everything slowed down. The raping of the Earth became less, and the noise dropped down tremendously. <laughs> But this is the way people live in Kali Yuga. It's people are lost. Manda sumanda mateo manya bhagya padrataha. In this age, people don't know what is right, what is wrong, what to do, what is not to do. If they have in some inclination for spiritual life, they usually find a wrong guru who wound up getting cheated. 
it's, it's just an age of bad luck. It's just this age. It's just one. It's the worst age of the of the humankind. Age of Kali. That's why Lord Chaitanya came, because he doesn't leave the living entities to struggle by themselves. He comes to give mercy. So as it says that in this age, what is that verse? Kalayar dosha nidi rajan asti eko mahagun kirtana eva krishna siya mukta sangam param vajet. That this age is so bad. It's an ocean of mistakes, faults, deficiencies, problems. You get rid of one problem and you create two more. It's just this age. We're devotees, and so maybe we don't have so many problems. But the general people, they're struggling every moment, somehow or other, to try to find a little bit of happiness. And all they do is struggle, struggle, struggle. This is the age of the age of Kali, the age of quarrel, the age of lying, the age of cheating, the age of misinformation. But there's one bright light, Kalayar Dosha Nidi. Rajan Asti Echo Mahagun. Mahagun means great benediction. What is that great benediction? Kirtana Eva Krishna Sya. The chanting of the holy names of the Lord is that bright light in this dark age of Kali, which will dissipate. Lord Chaitanya is known as Kali Yuga Pavana. Kali Yuga Pavana Kali Boya Nasana Sri Sachi Nandana Nam Ray! Kali's like a dog. Ruff, 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 ruff. And Lord Chaitanya said, Hut, 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 hut! He chases away the dog of Kali simply by the chanting of the holy names. Kali Yuga Pavana Kali Boya Nasana Sri Sachi Nandana Nam. Ray! Everybody together. Kali Yuga Pavana Kali Boya Nasana Sri Sachi Nandana Nam. Ray! <laughs> Sachi, yeah. So, Lord Chaitanya, he's come with the stick. He's got a stick. Hey, Kali! 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 Go, 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 go! <laughs> Kali runs. <laughs> yeah, Kali's afraid. That's why there's so many problems now. Because Kali Yuga, he knows, my God, Lord Chaitanya, he's here. I got to work fast and try to corrupt as many souls as I can. Yeah, he's working fast, Kali. Kali's afraid of Lord Chaitanya. So he's on... He's on a march, he's getting all his armies, lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, envy, fear. And he's using all these pe things to imprison people's hearts and minds. Because he knows Lord Chaitanya is here and Lord Chaitanya has the weapon to destroy Kali. Because you see how many years we are into Kali Yuga. We're only 5,000 one hundred years, and this age is supposed to last four hundred and thirty-two thousand years. We still have four hundred and twenty-seven thousand years left. Generally, Kali's slow; he just goes real slow. But now, with Lord Chaitanya here, he's afraid, so he's working fast. But he's hiding, <laughs> and he comes out with coronavirus and lockdown, <laughs> and then he creates more problems. And then Lord Chaitanya says, we don't listen to you, Kali. We're chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, yeah. So this is, the, this is the only shelter in this age. Enecheya sadhi mayam nasi baralagi hari nama maha mantra Lao to me, Mahagi. Ainaichi, I've come. A Saudi, I got the medicine. It's not a vaccine. It is the holy name. I've come with the, the medicine in this age to push back the effects of Kali. Chant the holy names. This is the medicine and for 
all ills, as Prabhupada said, it's the panacea. The word panacea means complete solution for all the problems in this age. Krishna's holy name. But we have to have that faith. That faith is the difference between chanting and something that looks like chanting. <laughs> when you chant with that faith, with that determination, with that feeling that takes shelter of Krishna in his holy name, you are not in this world at all. You are out of this world. You are on the transcendental platform. You may appear like you are still here, but you're not. Because that holy name lifts you up and takes you out of this place. Because it's Krishna himself and his most manifest, most merciful manifestations of himself. And it's available for everyone and anyone. That's the difference. Before, in previous ages, you had to have qualifications to practice spiritual life. In this age, it's the opposite. The more unqualified you are, the more you are eligible for the mercy. That was proven by this pastime of Jagaya Mada. The Lord, Lord Nityananda wanted to show, I want to give this mercy to someone who is the most lowest, most despicable, most sinful, just to prove how merciful my Prabhu is, Lord Chaitanya. Yeah. So therefore he said, it says that the more you're unqualified, the more you are eligible for this mercy. <laughs> that is the Gornitai. We can't understand, that's like the Prabhupada said, you can't understand their mercy. And you'll never be able to understand their mercy. <laughs> Krishna was not, Krishna said, surrender to me, become my devotee. <laughs> and, and then after he spoke that, People thought, boy, this Krishna, he's, he's a really hard guy. He's making it too tough. So Lord Chaitanya thought, well, I'm Krishna. And I've come at the beginning of this age, or the end of the previous age, as Krishna. And nobody's listening to me. So I'm going to make it really easy for them. All right, don't surrender. Chant. Dance. And eat. Can you do that? <laughs> Chant, dance, and eat. And chant and dance when you get tired. Take some prashan. Then chant some more. And then dance some more. Get a little more tired. Take some prashan. Yeah, this is one song. It's like that. That just describes the devotees who are chanting, dancing, get a little tired, take some prashan, keep dancing and chanting, take a little, little prashan, because if you take too much, you'll go to sleep. <laughs> And then you, then you just keep going, and then you just forget about time, that's all. How do you go? He's still dancing. So yeah, that, that's what happens to you. You become like a child. <laughs> so this, this, is, this is what Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda came to give to the world today. And so this is their mercy. So we, uh, if we have that faith, that's the difference. That's the thing, difference between success and failure, faith. And faith is not something you just feel. It's something you act upon. If you have faith, then you'll chant. And if you have faith, you'll chant knowing that there is no greater way to connect with the Lord than this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It's considered to be the highest form of worship ever. And it looks like singing and dancing. That's all it is, right? That's what it is. But it's more, much more than that. It is the highest expression of loving devotion that one can give in honor of the Lord in this age. Chant and dance. So that's... The, Lord Nityananda, so Lord, Lord Nityananda has appeared, and now we are preparing soon, within one month's time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will appear. 
So this is a time when we can prepare our hearts and minds for the appearance of these two great personalities by becoming more and more attached to the instructions they gave. And Lord Chaitanya just gave two basic instructions. Two basic instructions. He said, chant the holy names and don't find fault with devotees. He says, if you do these two things, he said, Nama Ruchi and Adarsha, Adosha Darshi. Dosha means faults, and Adosha means no faults. Darshi means to see. One who is a dosha darsi does not see the faults of others. He said, if you, you may see faults in others, but it's not so important. <laughs> Just forget it. <laughs> it's not important. And so one who does not see, find fault with others and chants the holy names, Lord Chaitanya says, that person gets my full mercy. So there's a requirement along with chanting not to find fault with Vaishnavas. Even if there's something you that disturbs you, just tolerate it. Because <laughs> people are tolerating me, why can't I tolerate them? <laughs> you don't think, well, you know, maybe I cause problems to others too, and they have to tolerate. We don't think like that. We think, hmm. I have to tolerate that guy, or this, this, you know. But how, you know, turn it around. <laughs> Look at it from another angle. You know, other people are tolerating me. So I should be tolerant of everyone. And at the same time, enthusiastic to associate with and serve Vaishnavas. Now this is Lord Chaitanya's mission. And therefore, he emphasized two things. Chant the holy names, serve the Vaishnavas. And serving the Vaishnavas is more than just, well, if the opportunity comes, I'll do it. No, that's not it. You have to think of ways to do it. You have to be actively engaged in thinking how to serve the devotees. You have to make plans how to do it. And that will open up your heart to complete mercy from the Lord. Let me become the Vaishnava, the servant of the Vaishnavas. And we can serve in different ways. There's so many ways we can serve. And one who becomes attuned to that, mercy, that mood of service, Krishna will inspire them to think of different ways to serve the Vaishnavas. And there you see some devotees, they're expert at serving others because they practice how to serve Vaishnavas. And they become, and Krishna gives them more and more ideas how to serve like that. So that's the other part of his mercy. That chat the Hare Krishna Mahamantra and serve the Vaishnavas. And then he adds a third one, <laughs> Jivadoya. Jivadoya means give this mercy to those who don't have it. In other words, try to be an instrument of their mercy by giving this mercy to others. We do that by having Harinams. We do that by doing book distribution. We do that by just prashadam distribution. We do that in so many, many, many ways. Thank you for coming tonight, Prabhu. Thanks for playing Murdanga. So, yeah, this is the final part of that three-part mission, Jivadoya, try to give this mercy to others. And because Lord Chaitanya told the Korma Brahma, by my command, be guru, save the land. Whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. Whoever you meet, encourage them to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. And if you don't know how to do it, 
Just ask Krishna, he'll help you. <laughs> okay, I just remembered there is prasadam yet. I forgot all about that. I'm sorry. I usually give classes at night and then that's the last thing. But now there's prasadam. So everybody's waiting for the feast. So therefore, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> All glory is the Lord Nityananda. Sri Nityananda Ramaki Jaya. Sri Nityananda Trayo Dosi Ki Jaya. Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu Ki. Sri Panchatattva Ki Jaya. Gaur Premanande. Hare Krishna. <laughs>